Hello everyone, my name is Beckett and welcome back to the channel. And today in Division 2, we have another build video for you guys. And if you watched my video yesterday, you will know we hunted down the exotic pistol and now we are making a build around it. And it is going to be a tank build. You can take this in Heroic, you can take this in Legendary, you can even do the raid with this and clear this as a tank. Whatever content you want to do, this is a great support build and your team is going to love you for this. But before we get started, if you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button and if you like the video, smash that like button. All right, now let's get into the play style of this build. You are going to be a tank, and if you've never played any kind of MMO, your job is to take damage and make sure the ugly guys keep shooting at you or hitting you with swords. It is pretty easy, although not as flattering as running at Hunter's Fury or running gun and being on top of the DPS meters every time. It is still a necessary role, especially in legendaries, whether you are going to run three DPS and one tank, one tank, one healer, two DPS, or three DPS and one healer. Go with the tank. It's the way to go. He's going to keep you alive. He's going to get you out of trouble. Now, although we are not going to be doing that much damage, we are bringing enough utility to the table where our teammates, especially the DPS, they can just go ham. They don't have to worry about surviving, about popping med packs. They can just do their thing, and you are going to speed through these missions, through this raid, through the summit. Now, I just want to mention before we hop into the specialization and the build that the footage you are seeing right now is on the PTS, but the actual gameplay footage of me tanking is on the actual game. So there is no difference when it comes to playing this on the actual game or on the PTS. Now let's hop into the specialization. We are going to be running Technician today, mostly for the Artificer drone. This is very good. While it's holstered, it's going to repair our shield so we can keep our shield up and keep going. We're gonna have all these different kinds of repairs, keeping our shield up and keeping us pushing for our team. We'll also get the skill tier. That's nice for the booster, but we're not really going to be using it for anything else, as well as the skill healing. It will help a little bit, not really much to notice, but everything helps in the long run. Now on to weapons. Now don't even mind my primaries because we're not even going to be using it. We are just going to be using our sidearm and it is the Liberty Exotic Pistol. And if you do not know how to get this exotic, I did a video on it yesterday. I'll leave a card somewhere. You can click on it. Now it comes with the pistol damage and the damage to target out of cover. That is great but we are more worried about this talent, Liberty or Death. Hits grant plus 2% weapon damage stacks up to 30 times. Now this is really great, nice little extra damage, but that's not what we're really worried about. We are worried about this headshots consume all stacks, repairing your shield for 3% per stack. So we are just going to be nailing body shots nonstop. And as soon as we really get to that point where our health dips, or we just need that little bit of heal because our shield is down or whatever it may be, we're in a situation where we need to have a on-demand heal. This is great because then we can just hit that headshot. Let's say we're at 10, 15 stacks. You know, we are getting 45% of our armor back and we are back in the fight right away. This is necessary for this build. Now let's take a look at our gear. For our backpack, we are going to be running the Bellstone Armory for that plus 1% armory gen. We are trying to get our armory gen up to around 5 or 6% just to be able to maintain that shield and just maintain ourselves on the battlefield. Now for stats for the backpack, ideally you would want Hasbro and armory gen and try to get those stats as maxed as possible. As you can see, I got explosive resistance and I had to reroll to this talent, which we are going to be using Protector. Whenever your shield is damaged, you gain plus 5% bonus armor, and all other allies gain 15% of your armor as bonus armor for 3 seconds. And this is a cooldown on 3 seconds. You're always going to be taking damage, so your allies are always going to have bonus armor, especially for those people who are using like those Intimidate talents. They can always switch to a different one, so they don't have to use Adrenaline Rush anymore, and you're just going to be putting out that much more damage out on the battlefield. Now for our chest piece, we are going to be using the Point Man. This is the named Gila Guard item. Comes with that brand set, 5% total armor, but we're really using it for perfect vanguard. Deploying a shield makes it invulnerable for five seconds and grants 50% of your armor as bonus armor to all other allies for 20 seconds. It's got a 25 second cooldown. Usually that armor is gonna break really quick and how you're going to wanna use it, well, if you are just getting used to it, 
I would say just use it on cooldown, but those more skilled tanks who know what they're doing or know when burst patterns are going to come out, let's say Chunga, or we're getting a bunch of rushers, you're dealing with outcast or hyenas, and they're all rushing your team at once. This is a good time to pop that defensive cooldown. You got that, your, sh your team is okay. They don't have to worry about anything. They can keep doing their thing. They have, what, a million extra armor. Nothing's going to penetrate that. And you can get aggro on all the rushers, on the outcasts, the suicide bombers. Now let's have a look at our four piece. We are going to be using the Foundry four piece. And this works really great. It's very easy to farm. You can find it in targeted loot or you can go in the summit and set your personal loot to this. Now we are just going to be having armor and armor regen on all of these pieces. And as you can see, we get that 10% total armor, we get that 1% armor regen and 50% shield health, as well as the four piece. Now the four piece is pretty big and that's where it's gonna come all together. We're gonna have all that armor regen. Now for the four piece bonus, it is going to be makeshift repairs. When you or your shield take damage, 20% of that mount is repaired to both of you over 15 seconds. So that is pretty huge. It gives your healer, if you're running with a healer, that little bit of leeway. And if you've ever played like a monk in World of Warcraft tank, it's the same thing as stagger. You're still taking damage, but it's in increments and it's much easier to deal with. Now, when it comes to gear mods, it just depends what difficulty you are playing on. I would say if you're playing just on heroic, you can put protection from elites or you can even go into some damaging things because mostly nothing's really going to break your shield. Now, if you are going into legendary content, I would get repair skills. It's the yellow one. Get that. That's going to help your booster and that's going to regenerate your shield so much faster. Now, when it comes to skills, we are going to be using the artificial fisher hive we're never going to throw it we're just going to keep on our back because it's going to repair us and repair our shields when it comes to mods for that just use anything that increases healing duration whatever it may be but usually you only have one choice for healing so go with that and for our shield we are going with the big bad boy the bulwark shield now when it comes for the mods for that we are just going to be looking for active regeneration that means we're regenerating our shield when it's out and shield health. Those are the two things that matter. Damage per enemy only matters for the Crusader shield and holster ge regeneration that doesn't affect us because we have no plans on holstering our shield. Now when it comes to stats, it's really easy. You just have to make sure you have those six armor tiers. Stack armor regen as much as you can. And if you have another slot, you're going to want to put Hasbro into that. At this point, my build is about 2.2 mil armor and I'm sitting at 70k active armor regeneration. Now that is just base. That doesn't include all the repairs I'm getting from my four piece, from my artificer, from my regen, from my shield and all different other mods that I have working for me. Now this is a support build and that's what you need to understand. When you play this, you are a tank, you are not going to be doing a lot of damage. So if you feel unsatisfied, like, oh, I'm not killing anything, I'm running solo. This is not meant to be run solo. You should be running this in a heroic situation with two or three people or in legendary missions inside the raid. You constantly have to have the active mindset that I am in that support position. It is my job to make sure everyone is shooting at me, that I am keeping my team up and healthy. Whenever that big spike of damage comes out, I am popping my Vanguard shield so they're up, so they don't have to worry, so they don't have to play defensive, so they can just go balls to the walls every single time. With you being the tank, it is also going to be your job to take lead during the missions, during Legendary. You're going to want to know where the spawns are take your team to the spot so you can kind of focus their direction because they're just going to shoot whatever they see now even though it does lack in damage and in solo play when you bring a team together and you have all this utility you are going to smash through missions and you're going to have a lot of fun and you're probably going to make a lot of friends because if you end up being a good tank people are going to invite you all the time you're always going to have someone to play with and you'll probably even get invited to raids fairly easily and be able to just farm out that eagle bearer the ravenous or whatever exotic you were looking for inside those raids so it's always good to have one of these builds and i always try to keep one in my bags or in my stashes so i can pull it out when i need it in those situations now that is all i have for you for the build video today guys but if you are looking for more 
build. I will leave an end card or something for you to click on. Go ahead and check that out. We have tutorials, news, everything from old to new players and everything in between. And thank you for watching again and I will see you guys next time.